Welcome to Life According to Scripture, where the Word of God is alive, anointed, and geared toward developing, improving, and strengthening your relationship with the Lord. Our teachings aim to spiritually nurture both new believers and strengthen those who are already mature in their faith. We're grateful to have you join us in the study of the Word of God today. We pray that it penetrates your heart deeply, bringing you even closer to the Lord. Greetings, radio audience, in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, this is Minister Caroline Gothier coming to you live from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Hesperia, California, in the United States. We thank you for gathering around the Word of God with us today. I thank you, Lord God, for everyone listening, that they receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, and that the words that we minister today will go deep into their heart, deep into their spirit, and will cause change in their life. And the enemy will not be able to steal it from them. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to be talking about a topic called confession versus repentance. Confession versus repentance. Um, some religions teach that confession is coming to a minister or a priest or someone in authority, and then you relate to them your wrongdoings. And uh, consequently, many believe that to confess something always has a negative connotation. I want to teach today the opposite of that. The Webster's Dictionary, Noah Webster's 1828 Dictionary, defines confessing as to own or acknowledge, to publicly declare a belief. Uh, now that, take that definition into consideration and ponder Romans 10, 9 and 10, which teaches how the lost become saved or born again. So in reading that passage, that's a positive. If you say with your mouth that Jesus and believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God. You see, that's a positive. That's a confession. That's a positive, And you can't even be born again without opening your mouth and confessing it. So there is a confession that is not negative. So even though when we hear confession, it's always connected to a negative. But I want to point out to you right away that it's not always a negative. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 is proof of that. People tend to think that confessions, first of all, negative, And secondly, they think of it as the same thing as repentance. Not so. Repent is defined in Noah Webster's dictionary as sorrow for what you've done, followed by an amendment in your life. Amendment meaning change. Um, <clears throat> Acts 2.38 lets us know we have to repent and be baptized. So we repent. That means we turn and go in the opposite direction of whatever it is we were doing. So repent is not only to be sorrowful for an action, a sin against God, but it's followed up by a determination for change in one's life, an amendment in one's life. Confession without repentance, listen carefully, confession without repentance is simply a religious act. Confession without repentance is simply a religious act. Why do I say that? Because confession means you say what you did wrong, but repent and you don't do anything to change it. Repentance means you make a change. You make a change. You don't just say, I'm sorry. You make a change that you're not going to do that anymore. But the Word of God teaches us as we study that we're to grow in the Word. 2 Second, Second Corinthians 3.18 says, we go from glory to glory. I like to put it this way. I like to say we grow from glory to glory. As we grow, mature spiritually, change begins to take place. Amendments in your life 
begin to take place or should begin to take place. In America, we have what we call the U.S. Constitution, which is the supreme law of our country. Um, that Constitution has 27 amendments or 27 times it has been changed, had something added to it by which we live, 27 different times. So when we speak of amendments as change, it helps to clarify and explain the significance of change, amendments, i.e. repentance. If you, if you make no change, if you don't amend anything in your life, you haven't repented. You've just confessed. Every night before you go to sleep, ask yourself, did I take a step closer to God today or away from God today? Take daily inventory of your life, judging it by the fruit your life produced that day. For example, when opposition arose today, did you display anger or did you display kindness, gentleness? Which only you can, can say that. Take daily inventory of what, you, what your spiritual accomplishments were for that day. Was it today more fruitful than yesterday or less fruitful? Take inventory of what changes are occurring, whether there are even a change or not. Take inventory. And if you, if you, if you have, if you live with someone, if you're married or if you have a close friend, have someone that you can be responsible to. You can have this conversation with, go back and forth discussing it, be accountable to. Romans 12, 1 through 3 is a passage I use a lot that fits in with what we're talking about today. Actually, it fits in with a, a lot of things when I teach. I just, I use it so much. But remember, we're talking about repentance, amendment, change. Whenever you think of repentance, don't just think confessing your sins and that's it. Repentance is change, amend. Think of the U.S. Constitution and its amendments. Their changes had to be made to make it better. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 1 through 3, verse 2 of that passage in the Passion uh, version of the Bible says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of your culture and tradition around you. Stop, to, stop, stop, imita stop imitating it. But be inwardly transformed or inwardly reprogrammed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation which is change, of how you think. I want to read that again. It's from the Passion Bible, Romans 12, verse 2. Um, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture and tradition around you, but be inwardly transformed, reprogrammed by the Holy Spirit through total reformation, or total change of how you think. Watch what this change will do. It says, this will empower you, still reading out of Romans 12, 1 through 3. This says, this will empower you. What will empower you? Renewing your mind, being transformed in your mind, will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful, satisfying life. This is an example of scripture teaching us we're to continually be in process of change, amending which fits the definition of repentance, change, amending, course correct. Hallelujah. Never again allow any religion to teach you that you have to go to a man to confess your sins or that confession is the same as repentance. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he, he who? Jesus. So we confess our sins to Jesus. It says, If we confess our sins to Jesus, he's faithful and he's just and he'll forgive us our sins. 
to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It says nothing about going to a preacher, a priest, or any person in ministry leadership. It says nothing about that. In fact, when you study scripture, it shows you where you no longer had to go to a priest like they did in the Old Testament. You, don't ha you no longer have to. That's one of the things that happened when Jesus died on the cross for, for us. Now we're able to go into the Holy of Holies. We're able to approach Jesus directly. I don't, I don't need an intercessor. I don't need somebody to stand in for me, uh, go in on my behalf like they had to have in the Old Testament and like you still see in some religions today. When he cleanses us, people may remember to try to throw things up into your face. But when Jesus says in 1 John 1, 9, you confess it, he forgives it. Another passage says he forgets all about it. He doesn't even remember your sins anymore. So people that bring them back up to you again, those are people that are being used of the devil to keep you down, to keep you from growing in the things of God. When he cleanses us, people may remember and try to throw it up to your face. But Hebrews 8, 12 teaches us, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. I will remember no more. Read that again. Hebrews 8, 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Whatever you did that was unrighteous, that was wrong, that was sin, their sins. He says, I will be merciful. And he says, and their iniquities, your sins, I will remember them no more. So if God is saying he doesn't remember your sins anymore after you confess them, then the only people that would remember them are those that are being influenced by the devil, by the enemy. Now, that may be somebody in your family. You know, I can't help that. The people that are closest to you, those are the ones that will throw things up in your face. But even so, the devil can use members of your family just like it can use other people. Hallelujah. The tra Passion uh, Translation of the Bible, so listen to how it says Hebrews 8, 12. For I will demonstrate my mercy to them, and I will forgive their evil deeds, and never remember again their sins. Mm. Listen to it again. For I will demonstrate my mercy to them. One passage says his mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. For I will demonstrate my mercy to them and will forgive their evil deeds and never remember again their sins. So once you've confessed your sin to God, no, not man, to God in the name of Jesus, and you repent, meaning you amend, make an amendment, change, or turn and go in the opposite direction of that sin. Once you've done this, you don't allow the devil or anyone the devil uses to take you back to the memory of those sins that God says he's forgotten. If God says he's forgotten, who are we to bring them up again? If God is forgotten, how dare we even consider bringing them up again? This is the word of God. And his word says, I'm God and I change not. His word says, I'm not a man that I should lie. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word says his mercies are new every morning. We start every new morning with the mercy of Almighty God activated in our life, which means every day we get a fresh new start. We've confessed our sins to Jesus. We've repented, turned, and gone in the opposite direction of that sin. And we realize and acknowledge his mercy is new every morning. Hallelujah. Now that's all the time we have for today, beloved. You can reach us in the United States at Oasis of Faith Christian Center, 17520 Lemon Street, Hesperia, California, 92345. In the United States, you can also reach us at lifescripture at gmail.com. Now until we come into your home again next week, I pray the blessing of God over your life and over your family. I thank you that you will take this word deep into your spirit and into your heart, that you will study it and meditate on it. And may God give thee increase.